but not anymore because there are many other organizations involved in the clinical part of the oncology. We need some stronger organization on the cancer politics, advocacy, organizational issues. UICC became very instrumental uh, during the last 10, 15 years. We were uh, putting a lot of efforts to convince the governments, patient organizations, civil society all over the world. Then, uh, this is not a picture of mine and the President uh, Hollande came to our opening. This, uh, and this picture shows us that civil society is able to convince the leaders of the world to, to, to work together to make cancer history. This is not a picture of my, myself to advertise, good picture. This is a proof that we can convince leaders. It's a good example, you are able to convince your Minister of Health was with us to the, this morning here. This is the way how should we work together, civil society, governments, patient organizations, academia, patients, parents, all of us should work together. And this is an example. Two weeks ago, the father of one of my patients sent me this slide. That child had a, 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 a very difficult uh, disease, liver tumors. The reason why the, the parents sent me this slide, please share this slide with your students. The, the, the father of the children was soon. Because you see in the middle, there was a tumor, liver tumor. The child was transplanted, transplant, liver transplantation. He is, she, he is in a very good condition now. The family, so we are working, this is a good example. We can, there is no end of the, 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 no limit of how you can contribute personal level. This is a modest contribution from a parent. If we work together, I am sure that we can make cancer history. This is my last slide, there are many opportunities wherever you are in the world. For high income countries, we have to increase the survival rates from 80% to 100% with minimum side effects. For middle income countries, we have to increase the survival rates from 50 to 60% to 80%. For even, even for low income countries, survival rates to, to, needs to be improved depending on the country. How? Basic primary cancer care, access to care, but it doesn't matter how developed your country is, we need more data to make progress on, 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 on cancer. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. <coughs> I'm sorry I had to rush you up because we are running too late, actually. Um, doctor Riyasir Wali will have no presentation. Smile, please, smile. Presentation usually and PowerPoint will take too much time. <coughs> Dr. Yasser Wali is Professor Head of Pediatric Hematology Unit, Child Health Department, Sultan Qaboos University Hospital. I'm going to start the questions. I will ask him a question. You have been, doctor, uh, listening to your colleague now. What is the part that really would attract your attention that you can apply either in your country or in the Gulf area? No. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this um, Awareness Day, and I'm really happy to be in Lebanon. Thank you in particular to Dr. Hassan, Raya, and all my colleagues. And um, I will first start by saying that um, the situation in the Gulf, particularly in Oman, where I work, of course, my, from my accent, I'm an Egyptian, <laughs> but I work in Oman for 21 years now, so I'm uh, almost half Omani. We have, um, uh, we have um, a system, a healthcare system, which is totally different from uh, what Dr. Hassan presented, that uh, every um, child or adult or any Omanis uh, are entitled for free medication uh, and the free healthcare uh, system. But I think from uh, today's um, presentations, I learned that this cannot go forever. We have a big challenge of uh, starting NGOs, big ones. We already have, uh, I can say, baby uh, or in their child, early infancy, uh, uh, non-government organization and uh, fundraising, which is almost very, very little in, uh, in the Gulf area in particular and uh, um, in the Gulf area in general and in Oman in particular. But I think in the future, we should have a start um, uh, this um, excellent 
government fundraising, uh, almost 50-50 here, 45% uh, for uh, NGOs, 45% of treatment by, covered, uh, by government. In our case, it's 100%, which we cannot do. The second uh, is... I think, uh, because also what, uh, what they presented regarding the figures of uh, that these figures are not uh, very accurate, I think it's the time now to have an accurate figures for our countries. How many children are affected with cancer? In, not in the CCCL or SQH where I work. We have accurate registries, but we, didn't, we, we want to have accurate registries across the board, at least in the POEM group. Uh, or in, um, we can start at winning uh, programs, not with St. Jude's and with the others, but at, between um, um, our Arabic countries. That will be a very uh, good initiative uh, to, to have accurate figures. Then uh, to have um, uh, these accurate figures will guide us in the future what we will do. I think the third point is the um, um, collaboration. We need to collaborate and to reduce the cost of treatment. Yes, we need to have the cutting edge of technology, which is very expensive. But in our countries, including the Gulf countries, I think we should look for mechanisms of reducing the cost of treatment um, uh, that will give an opportunity to, to treat more and more ch children with cancer. Um, we, um, as you have refugees um, uh, here from Syria and from uh, nearby countries, we also have, because of the situation of Yemen, we have also uh, those coming from and they are from uh, Yemen and they are entitled for free treatment um, uh, in Oman. So I think more and more uh, people, uh, our children with uh, with cancer and people with diseases will come to this area. Um, the challenge is to reduce the cost and to increase the eff efficacy, which is not uh, an easy. We have to revise our guidelines. We have to. Uh, see more ways of fundraising and uh, at the end um, I would like to thank uh, all the Lebanese for inviting me to come to this prestigious conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. That was really efficient and, and quick. All right, the questions are on the floor now. If you have questions, please raise your hand. Then if you are called on, you will have the mic. You state your name, profession, and title, please. Anyone has a question for any of our distinguished panel? Yes, of course you can. I would like to first thank him very much because um, I think effective administration is a key for reduction of the cost and for um, uh, decreasing the waste too much. So um, if you if you can tell me what um, how يعني, uh, how you you have much, uh, they build your unit how, how much people you need to have this efficient administration uh, you have uh, just presented. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, first of all, when you start by building an organization, an NGO, it's, it's a board which will start, man, uh, it's a board-led organization. The, the board at the start will start leading the management till the point where uh, you have enough resources in order to have uh, a good leadership, okay? Uh, uh, and this takes years. So when the board started in 2002, uh, uh, in Lebanon, it is till 2000 and uh, half of 2008, 9, 10 that all started to be managed by the management and not by the board. So it takes time, and it's a cycle. How many people do you need to manage this organization? Uh, in our case, we are 27. Uh, manage uh, 27 employees inside the organization, managing the organization. And uh, if you look at the international standards for the same amount we are raising, you need double the figure. So we are efficient at fundraising. Oh, right. thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, questions? Uh, anybody have questions? Otherwise, I have a question. Well, I'm going to put my question to Dr. Hassan Salah. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, please, the mic here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doctor, please state your name and, and okay. Open it. You have a microphone? I can speak loudly. Yeah, go ahead. I will help, I will help you. <laughs> so, I'm Asim Belgaoni. I'm um, from Qatar. Yes. Uh, 
So one of the things that, the, the, the one thing that I sort of got from all of these conversations and the, 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 the talks that happened before, thank you very much, the talks that happened before, is there's really a theme that even within the region, if you look at the regional countries here, there are different levels where we are all at. Uh, within the region, but there's themes that sort of go across the whole thing. And these are related to patient access, patient care, um, um, resource limitations, uh, either because of refugees or not refugees or people coming in or financial statuses or governments not being able to cover it. And so there really is this partnership that needs to be developed between um, NGOs, between government offices, between other institutions that are there. And I think we really have an opportunity to work together regionally, not a poem group, for example, with stresses from Morocco to India. There are countries in there which are very, very different in their capacity. Uh, if you take countries like um, India or Pakistan, where you've got, you know, India is a billion and Pakistan is a 200 million plus, you know, huge countries within there. And so even within there, there are regional areas which may be different from each other. I want a question, doctor. I need a question, doctor. I'm getting there. Yeah. What I would like to hear is how can we collaborate? And how can we use the experience? Because each of our experiences is different. So how can we use these experiences you know, learning from each other to come up with some strategy for this. Thank you, doctor. This is called going intra-regional. So I'm going to ask Dr. Hassan, who has challenging strategy for local, regional, and international. Go, go ahead, Hassan. So I, why don't you use the other one? I don't have one. This is the one. <laughs> uh, Asim, you're addressing, uh, you know, a very critical question that we have um, discussed in uh, several of our meetings in the POWM group. And uh, I think the only uh, way we could uh, make progress is by first looking at the assessment of the needs and the status. You mentioned there is significant variations and discrepancies between the countries, and there are significant variations and discrepancies within the countries, between centers. So I think we need to look at the needs and the assessment of the, uh, the situation at the present time for childhood cancer. We start with there. Second is, the, in each country, there should be contribution from the government, NGOs, and academic centers. And this is why I talked about the model. And we need to look at this model to be used even in very low income countries. There is no way that the government, you know, could take care of the problem. And the example is in Canada and even in England, when we talked about the government taking care of all patients at no cost, it did not work. There was delay in the management. Same thing when you talk about patients who are left alone to take care of all the expenses for the medical care, it doesn't work. So there's something in between. And this is why we talked about this model. And you can look at this model in each country. This is at the level of the country, and then at the level within the centers, the government should make regulations for centralizing the care of chronic or catastrophic diseases. You cannot have all hospitals take care of children or adults with cancer. You have to accredit centers where you would say, this center can provide care, because if you provide suboptimal care, you are not only not solving the problem, you're creating another problem. The third thing is to centralize the expensive testing. You know, molecular studies, tests that could be, and this is what the major centers in the states did. Even in the states, you have the COG, where they have 270 centers, but they centralize in the lab where they do certain molecular testing. So I think we need to look at a strategy, and as you know, Asim, in the business meetings that we have in the POEM, we are putting a strategy. It takes time, because we need to understand what are the objectives for each each group involved in this process, and tomorrow we will have a meeting for the POWM group, and this is on the agenda, is how to look at supporting the network 
so that we can address all the issues you addressed in your in your question. Yeah, so you will have time tomorrow, so we can stop this one now here, and I will jump to Dr. Tatsar. Do you do you want me to ask you a question, or do you want to elaborate? Just a, a quick comment. Make it very on quick. The question. The Lebanese way, please, oh, not the Turkish way. <laughs> uh, it is more uh, visible. The control of cancer at the global level it is more visible at the moment at the United Nations level and WHO level. In May, about uh, one month later, the World Health Assembly will be discussing on the new uh, version of the cancer resolution. Probably it will be accepted. So there is a golden opportunity for all civil society working together with the governments at the priority is increasing. So each of us uh, can invest on that at the different level. Okay, great, thank you. Any, any question? Uh, I'm not going to ask question because you have another session, though I have 40 questions and it took me a few days to prepare them. No, so we can actually, all right, I still have one question before I say thank you to the members. And that question is going to be, well, very simple. How much international organization can move out from political impact and address the problem of deadly diseases in children, regardless of and without any discrimination? I mean, yeah. this is very, very important today. The interrelation between international organization and how much they actually can create the dynamic that the doctor was talking about, and Dr. Atu was talking about, and Hassan was developing. Actually joining efforts to reduce